A random point is chosen on a uniform, uh, uniformly in the disk uh, given by this constraint. Now we're letting R be its distance from the origin and we are asked to find the expectation of this um, random variable R using 2D Lotus. Uh, we are also given a hint to do the integral but convert it to polar coordinates. Okay, so let's see what we are dealing with here. So we have a random disk. Let's just uh, draw this out. Let's see if we can get. All right, let's see if we can get straight lines from the beginning. Like that, like so. Uh, like a circle well, it wasn't centered properly. Something like this. Something like this. It's not entirely centered, but bear with me. And then we have a in the random variable R being this radius here. Okay, and so X is then this variable here and Y is then that variable there. Okay, so let's just write down the um, an expectation and see what we need to handle. All right, so we are now um, without doing the polar coordinate conversion we have to integrate over r, x, and y, given that um, r is x2 plus y2. And then we do that over the uh, weighted by the density of x of y, dx, dy. Okay, so one thing here is that why did I choose, and uh, why did I write x to xy. Well, that's because of the Pythagorean theorem where we have r squared. And I should say that's actually c immediately in error. This is b square, the square root of it. So r squared is the same thing as by the Pythagorean theorem x squared plus y squared and so r is just for positive values the square root of this whole distance there okay and so this is what we uh, used in the transition here using 2d lotus so that's what 2d lotus gives us allows us to do this okay so now we are given a hint to do polar coordinates. And um, you might ask, why should we do polar? Well, it's just much, much easier to do polar coordinates. And there are plenty of um, videos out there on YouTube explaining how when you have a circle or something spherical, it's much easier to operate in uh, polar coordinates instead of um, the X and Y coordinates. And what polar coordinates gives us and just going through the intuition. So let me just copy this, duplicate it. So what we have instead in polar coordinates, instead of X and Y, we will have a angle here, theta, and we're going to have a radius, uh, R, that we are integrating over. So we integrate over this little radius here, and then we ask to move this in different uh, different directions. Okay, so that's that's good. Um, let's do that uh, conversion by. Well, actually, before we do that, let's let's just define what the um, what the uh, density is, right? Because the density will help us. Uh, we need that to do the conversion. So the density, what is that? Well, the density here is, um, because it's uniform in the area, it's uniform over the, over, the, um, over the circle, and it's proportional to that area. And the area of a circle is, so the area, capital A, is 
r squared uh, times pi. And we know that r squared in our instance is 1, so the area here is 1 times pi. And because it's uniform, the, the PDF is 1 divided by pi. Okay, so now we have the PDF and we have the, um, um, and we know what we're going to do and we're going to now do the conversion over the polar uh, coordinates. Fine, okay, so let's uh, do that. So let me, um, and this is, this is a little tricky if you don't uh, uh, know your polar coordinates uh, by heart, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that fully in this video. Perhaps I'll do it in a follow-up where we go over the, um, the definitions and why, um, basically how to derive the polar coordinates. It's, uh, it's a little, it's a little cumbersome, but, but it's actually t totally logical and as all mathematics is in the end. So the polar coordinates, uh, given by um, the um, just by definition is x equal r cosine uh, times theta and y equals r sine theta and theta here is the is the angle okay great and we actually need one other thing, which is that we need to um, do the Jacobian here as well. And the Jacobian uh, comes from the fact that we are making a transformation of, of variables. So the, the Jacobian gives us um, basically how sensitive um, that transformation is over different theta r values corresponding to x, y values. So the Jacobian here is, um, basically defined as the determinant of the x and y with x, y space uh, moving in r theta space. And now, um, this is a little confusing, I'm using these bars as, as the determinant where here is I'm just using it as denoting transformation, so I'm going to change that, just calling it like so. So what is this determinant? Well, this determinant says take the derivative of x, derivative of r, and then fill that in with the derivative of x over the derivative of theta, and derivative of y over the derivative of r, and the derivative of y over the derivative of theta. Okay, so let's figure out what those values are. So the derivative of x with respect to theta is that we look at this equation here, we take the partial derivative, uh, treating theta as constant because we are taking the derivative with respect to r, we get, what do we get? Well, we get, uh, we get cosine r because derivative of r is just one. So this is cosine theta. We now we do the derivative of theta respect to x. So now we are treating r as constant and taking the derivative over um, theta. And that is minus r sine theta. Good, and now we do this line. So we're taking the derivative of y with respect to R, and this is just sine theta. And after that, we take the derivative of our y again uh, with the respect to theta. And this then gives us r cosine theta. Great. Now we are calculating the determinant, so we have to. Uh, calculate at what what that is and the rule I'm going to just copy this the rule for doing that 
is basically to multiply this cell by that cell and then this cell by that cell okay all right so and this is this is now sort of outside of probability theory we are in the domain of calculus so i'm not going to go through exactly the derivations of that but there are really good explanations again online to do that so cosine theta times r cosine theta plus and then we have a negative so that's just minus r sine theta times sine theta like so okay so simplifying a bit so we have r cosine theta squared minus um, let's see so we have a minus Oh, let's see, I think I have a, a, um, a missing negative here somewhere. Oh yeah, so uh, when you do the determinant, it's you take the negative of the negative uh, negative of that right hand term, like that. Okay, so then we end up with plus sine squared theta and we can take out the the r uh, like so okay so now we have the determinants we have the um <laughs> the transformation done let's plug everything in and uh we'll see what we have to work with so uh, right we're also also have to transform the um um the limits so if we do the limits over the radius, uh, we know that we have to move from zero to one because that's what the constraint given to us from here. So we have the radius starting from zero, moving to one. And then we'll have theta going from zero degrees to 360 degrees. And we can expect that, express that in terms of pi. So that's from zero to two pi. Zero to two pi, that's over theta and we do the transformation uh, so we have uh, x squared x squared so we have x squared um, and x is just this term all right so we can do so that's r squared cosine theta squared plus r squared sine squared theta then all this uh, we take the square root of and now we have to multiply by the determinant and the determinant is uh, this term here and by the way um, by the Pythagorean theorem this term here is just one and so we end up with times r that's the determinant and we are doing this over dr d theta okay so there was a bunch of uh, trigonometry there in terms of transformation and i know that 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 seems a little um it's just my assumption here so we have to we have to trust it and and move on uh, based on it we can definitely revisit it at some other point if there is uh, interest in digging deeper into how those um trigonometric definitions were were derived okay so let's move on here we have the um, right and we have also we shouldn't forget we shouldn't forget and we have the PDF obviously but the PDF is constant so I can just pull it out so it's 1 over pi okay so now we have everything we need we can um, do the same trick as we did here is that we can pull out r squared and then we end up with cosine squared sinus squared and that is just one so this term here is just r squared and then there's a one in here 
and then the the square root of it it's just ending up with a with an r but then we have another r outside so we end up with an r squared so this is a little bit of a jumping around here but um, it's all moving together here okay two pi and then we have dr d theta now we do the integration over r space and that gives us uh, r uh, power to the three and then we divide by three and this goes from zero to one right and we have pi zero to two pi and the theta right here and this inner term is just multiplication basically one one third and then zero so what we're left with is just one third one third um let's take that and we'll leave that outside one third well actually we can just put the third here okay so we end up with zero to two pi one d theta and that is just when taking the integration over it when we integrate over that uh, that is just theta from zero to two like so and that becomes yeah, there's a zero there so what is left is two pi divided by three pi to third so that's the expectation uh, of of the random variable r now in the other part of this question we are asked to find the cdf of r and of uh, r square sorry and r without using calculus and then using the fact that for a uniform region uh, uh, probability is that that region is is proportional to the area so that's sort of what we've done already uh, then get the pdf as well for those two and then we're going to find the expectation in two more ways using the definition of expectation so that's without lotus and then we're allowed to use lotus okay let's do that let's do that so we have uh two i'll well, see we just write two uh, sorry just b like so and um we are asked now to uh so what, what is it what is it that we have to work with well so the probability of i think this um uh, i just copy copy uh, uh, this one here and just see what that sub area means so this what the cdf possibly could mean here it's going to remove this these pieces here so we know that r is just the radius out here now what does it mean that we have a like a sub area well a sub area is just having the little area inside this little circle where the um the radius of this sub area is for example we call it a right in this area now this area now is just proportional to to the area of the inner circle and then divided by the area of the outer circle right so this gives us a hint that the probability so the cdf the probability of of r being less than this area is is the same thing as the area of a area or the sub area of uh, of a divided by all area so that's that's good um we know that all area <clears throat> uh, 
uh, is pi, right? That we did by all area, capital A is, we know that the radius is one squared times pi. So we know all areas is pi. And the area of A, the area of A has to be, we call this A small, and that radius is A squared pi. Well, that is the area, whatever A is, is, uh, is this. So that is A, a squared pi. So now we have, now we have the, um, the CDF of um, of that, and, and, and yeah, just just to simplify, so we can just say that's a squared. So that's a uniform because we obviously can just remove those pi's there. And then if we do the um, the PDF of, of of this, so the so if that's the this is the CDF, this is the CDF. We just call this f of a, the PDF of this whole A is just the derivative of this by the fundamental theorem of uh, calculus or basically definition of, of, of a PDF. So that's 2A. So that's the, um, uh, the, the PDF. Um, all right, and now we are asked to do the same thing, but now do it for um, the CDF of of R squared. So perhaps I can write just R like that, just to signify specifically for those little tiny areas. Um, so R squared is then, what is that? So we have R squared, R squared, so that's R squared for whatever area we're interested in. Maybe I'll just call this B instead to not confuse terms here so that is in the, the probability of r square root of b now the same logic applies we're back in the domain of of r so we know that all area is is pi again okay but now the um the radius is square root of, of b. So here we can, instead of a, we write square root, square root of b. And power two pi, like so. And this ends up just being b. And so the PDF of r squared of b is the derivative of that b, which is one. So it's constant, and it means that this is a uniform um, and variable. And the distribution of r squared is, is uh, uniform, okay? And now, uh, now we, let's see, where are we in the we're number of questions here? So we've done the, um, we find the CDF without any calculus, uh, then get the PDFs that we did. We're going to find the expectation of R. And by thinking, using the definition of expectation and then using one D Lotus as a function of R square. Okay. Okay, so let's do that expectation of R. So here we're not allowed to use the um, uh, 2D Lotus. Okay, so then we have to integrate over all over R, the domain of R, uh, and then dr, like so. We have just uh, acquired the PDF, f of R, that's 2a, and then R is just what R is. Okay, so then we have, and by the way, the domain goes from 0 to 1, by the definition of the problem, uh, we have r times 2r over dr. And that is r squared, so we have 2 like that. We have r squared, so the 
antiderivative is 3 from 0 to 1. That is uh, indeed 2 thirds as we as we figured in the first part of this problem here. Okay, that's good. So we didn't use any Lotus, we just uh, figured out what, what the PDF is of R and then proceeded um, on that basis. Okay, in the next, the next problem we are uh, required to um, calculate the expectation of R using 2D Lotus. Now, what is R? Well, R is basically R squared, the square root of it. Okay, so that, that just uh, gives us nothing else than what we, um, what we did. Uh, just, just doing basic algebra here, right? So then, then what is it that we have? We have um, taking the integral over zero to one, and then we end up with a, um, a little, little dummy here, which is that whatever r squared is, and we call it b or, or whatever, uh, this becomes square root of, of r. I mean, I think it's better if I just don't call it r, I call it b, okay? Because it's just anything that uh, signifies this, this variable uh, there, okay? And so in the PDF, and by Lotus, the PDF of r squared is just one. So this is just one over db. And that is um, now b. So we have one, uh, we have the square root one half here plus one, b three squared divided by uh, two thirds, right? From zero to one. And that is is just two thirds again. So yeah, that was that was it. Uh, it was a fun problem. Uh, a lot of tricks in here, and um, just getting a gist of where we're using different properties of, of the transformations. Uh, we even have Jacobian here for the first time. Uh, so that's that's an interesting uh, piece that is really important in the in the any transformations that we'll be using um, in, in math and machine learning in general.